Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Now, a lot of you um, so uh, know about the word structure and how I talk about structure. Another way you can use the word structure is formation, how something is formed, how something is structured or how something is formed. And you've heard me use the word tension and uh, it, it's, it's very, oh, thanks. Thanks, thanks. There's the, there's the link there. Julie's just put it in. But um, anyway, a structure, is, everything is a structure. Okay, so you're a structure. Everything's a structure. So a structure is an entity made up of different parts working together. Okay. And, and these different parts are held together with something called tension. Okay, tension holds it together. Now, when you have the right tension, everything stays together. But if there's a disequilibrium in the tension, one thing inside moves to the other. Does that make sense? And you guys know it like your arm muscle here. If I increase the tension here, I'm going to move my arm that way to resolve. And then if I let go, increase the tension here, it goes the other way. Does that make sense? Simple lever. Okay, simple, simple lever. So we, so we understand that and we understand a, a structure. We know that your toe is, is in the same structure as your ear, but someone else's toe isn't. And so there has to be a similarity for the tension to work. So, you know, water's in tension. Now, now just, just basics, right? And so you have a structure with how you orientate to the world and it's very predictable. So I want you to, to have some awareness here you actually have a predictable path or structure that you follow whenever you fail. You have a predictable structure that you follow whenever you personally succeed. And who thinks it would be a pretty big benefit to know the difference? It's a pretty big benefit. Now, so what is failure? Failure is simply not meeting the expectations that you, you set out to meet. That's it. You know, failure is you expect this and you get this. That's fate. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not a thing. It's just, it's a failure is a part of success. It's actually in the structure of success. Failure is actually in the structure of success. However, we, we have certain ways that we, we do things. And I, and I want to prove this to you so that you can catch and you, you can see and understand the way that you are, are going to, to go about things. And so a, a quick backstory uh, on this. People have, a, people have a success structure. And I want to talk about one of my heroes, Michael Jordan. Uh, who's seen the, uh, the, the Netflix documentary about him uh, and, his, and the Chicago Bulls team? Re really cool. cool, cool thing. But he, here's something I really love from it. He, he won three uh, championships, had two years of playing baseball, you know, not winning, and then he won three again, okay? So what, what's interesting about that is something changed, something changed. And he also won when he was um, playing college, you know, NCAA won in college. So, so very winning, won in the, before he won NBA titles, he won an Olympic medal, always winning. But something changed for two years, he lost. What happened, what changed is his father died. His father died. And then what happened in that two years, he created a new relationship with a new father figure of the same age of his father. Guess what? He won for three years and then that, that father figure got sick and he didn't win again. Now, that's an interesting success structure, isn't it? Very interesting success structure, how he's orientated. He needs that orientation. Interesting to consider. These are just facts. Could be, uh, could be, could be lots of things. These are just facts. Here's another, another interesting structure that sometimes uh, people are just in certain structures that create results. And so 
I was reading, uh, I always read biographies and one of the biographies of people I read about was uh, Marilyn Monroe. Did you know that she was actually an orphan? Who knew that about her, by the way? And by, we know that Marilyn Monroe is not her, her original name, but that's the name we know her by. And, and so she, she was an orphan. She had, to, uh, she had to learn how to get chosen, learn how to get the eye. Does that make sense? She learned that structure. It became her. Very interesting if you think about how someone rose to, you know, being in, uh, you know, with presidents and other things like that, right? Big shifts, hey? Why? Why? Is it because she's a, she was the most beautiful or the most this? I mean, she was all those things, but there's something else there. There's structure. And so it's very, very, very interesting when you start to think and look, okay, well, what's the structure? Because isn't it true? We've all been able to... Uh, We've all been able to create success in our life and we've all been able to create failure. True. Because success is just going for something and then getting it. Right. That's a successful completion of your creation. Oh, that's what I'm trying to create. And I create it. Failure is trying to create it and not fail, not creating it. True. Doesn't change you personally, but who gets that? We've all, we've all created success and failure. Yeah. Yeah. So what if I would let you know that you have your own personal structure of how you create success and failure, and it's obvious, and once you notice it, you can stop doing it. Once you notice it, you can stop doing it. So do you guys want to, uh, you guys want to unpack this? You want to have a look? So here's the first big question. And uh, I want you to answer this as truthfully as possible. And the question is, what is the one thing? What is the one thing you would love more than anything? What is the one thing? And be really truthful. This If you got it, was the one thing you'd love to create for yourself more than anything? Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Mel. More than anything. What was a one thing. You're allowed to pick one. I'd like to hear from more of you. I haven't had enough. What's the one thing? Hmm. One thing you would love to create more than anything. Mm. Mm. One thing more than anything. A life that thrills me, a life I love, my true love, freedom, peaceful, blissful life. Yeah. I love that, Kelly. Thanks, Nadia. All right, so give me the little hand up. We'll just type in a number one if you've done it, uh, if you've written it down somewhere else, just so I, uh, just so I know. All right, cool, cool. It, it just helps. So, so when I'm asking these questions, just, just make sure you write done or something or a yes or whatever, just so, uh, because I want to make sure my timing's right. Appreciate you. Okay, so, so, so that the one thing you'd like to do more than anything else, I have uh, anything else. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into that end result 100% and just have it and just receive it. Okay. That's all we're going to do is, is, is the steps. Everyone okay with that? So all I want you to do is with me is just close your eyes and go into that end result. Go into that end result. Just have it. 
just receive it and notice what it's like just to have it when you just love it for no other reason. Go in it with your heart. Have it with your heart. Just feel it. What's life like if that's it? Ah, so good. Okay. So just, just feed it back to me. Open your eyes, come back. What's it like when you go into it just with your heart, just having it? How does it feel? How does it feel? Bubbly, fulfilled, pure bliss, giddy. Nice. Fulfilling, squishy. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> cool and warm, magnetic, relaxed. Hey, Facebook crew, uh, I'm only looking at, you, at, at Zoom questions and answers. So if you'd like to just click on the Zoom link, that'd be great. Feel lighter, feels like home satisfaction. Thanks, Nicola. Perfect. Okay, great. So, so you felt it, you went there. It's good, right? Absolute presence grounded and powered for me and all. Cool. Just notice these words that are coming through. I'm living me. Mm. Nice. Relaxed, empowered. Great. Great. Mm. Just feel the energy in that for a second. Feel the group, feel the energy. Just notice how good it feels to go into what you'd love more than anything else with your heart. Thrilling, grounded, powerful, calm and true. In tune, calm and in tune. Beautiful. Okay, so this time, this time, we're going to go into the same end result, but we're going to make it about your identity. We're going to make the end result mean something from an identity perspective. So the identity thinks if I have this, I will be more loved, more validated. I'll be better. And if I don't, then I won't. Okay. So I want you to go into this next one, same end result, but I want you to go into it from the perspective of your identity. Okay. So I'm going to choose for all of you to step into the same thing from your identity, okay? You ready? So close your eyes. That's it. And now step into the same end result and ask yourself, what does this mean to my identity? Notice how it feels. What does it mean to my identity? Oh, I'm a better person. What do other people think? Just notice and, and really go there with your identity. What does this end result mean to your identity? Notice if it feels different. Go into the same end result, but this time as your identity. All right, when you're ready, open your eyes and fill me in. Is it the same or different? Same or different? Fear in certain aspects. Now I'm like all the others. I can give more interesting feels like, do they like me? Do I cause enough of an impact that's too big? It's embarrassing, weird. I'll be perfect and worthy, totally different, very different. Relief, validation, I'll finally be fixed. Different, seen, heard, validated, don't deserve it, felt uncomfortable. I'm awesome and now people will love me. This time I could hear their voices calling me different. Childhood wounds came up. Feels more mental, like putting on a show. Also feels temporary, like it will not last. 
it's fake. Some anxiety and thoughts, I can't do it. I fail them. Bit different. Higher energy. So, so notice, I didn't give you guys any instructions other than to notice it from two different perspectives. But look how easy it was for you to see the difference between going for what you love with your heart and making it about your identity. Now, that's very interesting stuff, isn't it? Who thinks that's interesting stuff? Just with one simple instruction, make it about yourself. You see? Same outcome. One, go with it for just because you love it. One, go for it for how it will make, it mean something about you. Who sees that? I specifically shortchanged you on instructions before this session so that you would just have to just witness it from different perspectives and witness everyone else on the group notice the differences. Big difference, hey? Going for what you love versus going for your identity. Same ingredients. Same ingredients. Still you still an end result, still a current reality, but coming from a different perspective. True. Well, you might, Bill says a good thing. He says it depends on whether your end result serves you or others, but just look at the amount of people commenting in here and just notice that the premise holds true. That when people go for the thing through their identity, it's different than when they're just going for it because they just love it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I think that the premise holds true that when you go for it because you love it versus you go for it because of your identity, I think it uh, is very different. And it's not just me saying it because you guys are all here watching people go through it with you. True? Yeah. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Hard, hard, to, hard to disagree with what we've just done. So most, most of us have, have a, 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 you know, we would love something, but we make it about our identity. So when you make it about your identity, you make it about what it's going to mean to you. Okay. When you make about what it's going to mean to you, what action do you take? What action do you take? Because you, it's likely that you've made this end result be about you. So what actions do you take? So when you, when you do this, when you make it about your identity, I want you to notice what actions do you take? So let me just explain this a different way. I'll, I'll share this about me. So what I would love more than anything in the world, more than anything, is to create a humongous tribe of conscious creators. That is my pure joy, pure joy, biggest, most amazing I could do. When I'm in my end result, it feels so good. When I make it about me, you know, I worry, is my content good enough? Uh, uh, you know, da, 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 da. will this be that? Or I do all these things. Actually, I've got a list if you want. I'll tell you about it in a second because you guys are going to get to this. And so, so what I do is when I, when what actions do you take when you make it about your identity? I really want you to see this. What actions do you take when you make it about your identity? Do you doubt? Do you procrastinate? Do you worry? Do you, do you judge? Do you bounce around? Yeah, Kelly, I know. I've seen your true goal, but I know, I know like what you do each day. True. Pivot, change ideas. So what do you do when you make it about your identity? Fix yourself. What do you actually do? I want you to really think about this because this is what's just happened right now. I've said, what is something you would love more than anything else? We've looked at it from two perspectives. Now I want to ask, well, what do you do when you've made it about your identity? I want you to become self-aware. 
I rethink, I overthink, I look for others' guidance. What else do you do? Come on, really go. Come on, guys. You can really get into this. What do you do? Worry, lose. What do you do? How have you done this in the past? Because most of us hold back doubt rather than given value. Yeah. What do you do? Well, let's stay in it. Well, you can go matter and put your coaching hat on, or you can just accept it that it's it's actually a process you're in right now. Let's go. You know, because we can, we can, you know, I know it's powerful. Get pissed, sign up to courses, books, procrastinate, overthink. Yeah, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do when you stay in the identity? Hmm. Compare, right? Try to fix my flaws, oscillate. Yeah, I see it all. It's all right. You want me to share mine? This is what I do. This is what I do when I'm in my, my identity. I think leaders should go first. This is what I do. Uh, I talk about it too much instead of doing. I doubt, become skeptical. I put others in the limelight rather than stepping into mine. I downplay the awesomeness that is my content. I do small things, not the big things. I get worried about money and things like that. I create a narrative or a story and explain it away. I can analyze anything. I've written here next to it. When you're in a narrative, you're in your identity. I surround myself with people who are behind me, not ahead of me. I help everyone else, I give it away. I judge other people and become hypercritical. I compare myself, I become jealous. I wonder why I haven't got as many followers as Robin's. I change ideas and I get busy on the wrong shit. See, it's about knowing when you're in your dysfunctional structure. True. True. <laughs> Karen says, is that your list or mine? That's my list. <laughs> you can't steal my list here. You can't outsource dysfunction to me. <laughs> I'm glad we're all having, I'm glad, I'm glad, it's glad, I'm glad to feel the fun reflected back because it is fun, but it, it's also, you know, really, really allowing yourself to go, what do I do when I'm making this about myself? Right? What do I do when I make, when I make this shit about me? Hmm. What do I do when I make it about me? I hold back. Don't say my truth. What do you do? You know? Instead of doing what I want to go over here, prepare, read another book, right? Quote another mentor, even if it came through your own intuition. Mm. Give your power away. Yeah. Say it's him in the relationship. Break up only to find the him in another one. And, and it's, isn't it nice just to notice this, you know? Isn't it nice just to notice this? Isn't it nice just to notice this? Okay, cool. All right, that's what I do. See, one of the, the, one of the big codes is know yourself. 
Know thyself. Know thyself. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the, the door shall be open. Ask and you are given. Know thyself. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, Callum, can you chuck that in the, in the Q&A box? We'll come back to it. Hmm. There, um, short answer, Callum, there's 13 principles, mate. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, something to ponder. So let's look at the other side of this. Let's look at the other side of this. What would you do if you were just coming from your heart? Close your eyes again, tune into the same end result. Truly step into that end result from your heart. Just accept it. Allow yourself to have this from your heart just because it feels good because you love it. All right, you're all there now. I can feel it. There you go. You got it. So when you're ready, what do you do from this perspective? You see, we just do it, right? Is it true? <laughs> Nadia wrote it in just as I said it. It's so effing different. Thanks, Dean. Isn't it different? Isn't it different? You just do it. just happens effortless grab the ball by the horns just do it it just works well lindy start off with uh well i choose a life i love how does that sound if you don't know what choice start off with the biggest choice possible a life i love does that feel good yeah start there yeah if you got to go back to basic, that's basic number one. I choose a life I love, right? That's the biggest, the biggest picture you can get. And from that, we can color in the different aspects. And so if you ever, if you ever feel like, well, I don't know what I want to choose, start there. If you need to, uh, if you need to get from LA to New York, you got to start heading east, right? So you got to go the biggest picture first, right? If you don't know, at least, you know, at least start moving east. I'm at least getting closer. True. So don't worry about if you don't know the finer details yet, because you might get a plane, your private plane, a train, a car, you know, whatever. Hopefully a plane. <laughs> But you, you can still get there. And so you don't know. You don't need to know the finer details. And you, you don't know exactly where. You know, you say, well, I want to go east. Where east? Well, how about the state of New York? Oh, the state of New York. Well, now it's getting more specific. Oh, well, now it's, I want to be in this particular address. You see, you go from big to small. 
Okay, so do you guys see the difference? Do you see the difference? Hmm. So here's my question to you. Hard not to. Thanks, Rob. I feel the difference so clear. Yeah. Here's my question. What will you recognize? I want you to pick three things that you will recognize when you are in your failure structure. What are three things you'll recognize? What are three things you can recognize when you're making it personal? Yeah, three. I want you to find three. What are three things you're going to find about when you're making this about you, when you're, when you're in the wrong orientation? And make sure you're not just putting this in the comment section, because when I hang up, you'll lose it. It's funny. I just, I wonder, I wonder if kids will still use the word hang, hang up, you know, you like you hang up the phone. <laughs> I was like, I don't hang this up. <laughs> you don't hang it up. <laughs> anyway, I still hang up Zoom. <laughs> hmm. So what are three things that you'll recognize when you're in the wrong structure. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I can. Sure, sure, I could. So the uh, so so my my three is number one, explaining it away with some intense narrative. Uh, number two is getting busy on the wrong stuff, getting very busy on the wrong stuff, and then number three is putting putting others where I want to be. Yeah, those are my three. Yeah. Uh, Dean, it's not really relevant for me to expand on mine. They're just my ones, mate. You know, it doesn't it doesn't affect you guys. It's just, you know, I'm just I'm just here. I'm letting you know the reason why I'm sharing you is uh, is I'm letting you know that that those are all okay, right? And as soon as I was aware of them, it, it's been the most beautiful structure in the world. Because as soon as I start, oh, I'm doing it. Oh, I'm, oh, okay. Look at that. Does that make sense? I just know because I know where that takes me. Does this make sense? Because I know where it takes me. It's the old structure. Knowing yourself, being aware of it. Now, do I need to fix that structure? No, I let it go. I let it go. Yeah, well, we're going to do that now, Nadia. Right, Peter. Cool. Hey, who's having a good session today? More awareness, self-master. Are you guys getting this? I want you to be aware of your structures of how you take something personal. Now, do you probably do this in many different areas? But the thing that matters the most is where you do it the most because when I asked the first question, what do you want more than anything in the world? What would you love? What one thing would you love more than anything in the world? It's the one thing you would love. It's the one thing you avoid the most. The one thing you love the most is the thing that's in most conflict with your identity, your core wounded identity. Is it true? Is it true? You know, the one thing. It's the thing that you want the most. That's why I started off with that question. What is the one thing you would love more than anything? 
has the most charge on it for you to accept it and have it. True, who's having a good session? Yeah, hard to admit, yeah. Because we've, I, we, we created it through an identity desire to resolve a way we feel incomplete. And so the one thing you want the most is the thing you have the most oscillation with. It's the thing you have the most oscillation with. I was always supposed to do this. Where's Julie? I was always supposed to be training and helping people with, with the magnetic, well, what's called the magnetic mind process. I did everything else I could to avoid it. And then when I started doing it, everything changed. So you know what you want. I already asked that first question, right? You know what you want. You know when you're in your heart, you just do it. True? So you know what you want, and you know when you're in your heart, you just do it. Correct? And so the question you got to ask yourself is, Am I following through? Am I following through? Am I just doing it? Or am I making it personal? Am I making about all these other things? Or am I just doing it? Am I just getting into the new structure? What do I want and follow through? See, it's easy. It's easy to talk about ideas, isn't it? You know, that video that you guys have all seen on YouTube with the two women on stage? I did three talks before that and I didn't do the recode. I was so scared to do the recode in a group. I was so scared. I did three talks before that. I didn't do it. I did one of my other processes. That was the first time that I did it in front of a live audience. Now that's interesting. It's also true. And the reason is, is because my identity, my identity didn't want to allow me to have the true success. Make sense? Because it's my truth. It's my truth. It's more than my truth. It's more than my truth. And so then when I finally just stopped standing in my, my identity pattern and I just said, I'm going to do it. And I just did it. That video has impacted over 2.5 million people now. 58,000 people have uh, joined us on a webinar. Does this make sense? It's going to take guts to take yourself on. It's going to take courage to go for what you love. One of my mentors calls it being a creative warrior. See, the old paradigm is you've got to fix yourself and do all these things. But the, but the truth is, is you're good enough and you can go for it. Does that make sense? Right on, Kelly. Right on. So I want to talk to you about a new structure. Self-mastery is having awareness of your old patterns and structures without the need to fix them and giving them power. As soon as you give it power, half of you believes what, Mel? <laughs> Are you saying half of you doesn't believe? See, the truth is going for what you want without trying to fix your old patterns or your old structures, because as soon as you go to fix them, as soon as you go to fix them, you give them the power. Yeah. No, I love that. Uh, half of me believes that I can do it. And then my ego subconscious is scared of moving into the new. Yeah, it actually doesn't matter if you believe or not just got to do it 
just got to do it. So there's uh, one of my least favorite uh, uh, quotes by Henry Ford is, if you think you can and think you can't, you're right. It's just not true. It's just not true. You know, I've thought that I could do something <laughs> and then failed. <laughs> Haven't you? Sure, every young man has had this experience. I've seen a beautiful woman Beautiful girl on the other side of the dance floor. Yeah, I can get her to dance with me. A lot of times it turns out you can't. <laughs> Doesn't matter how much I believed. <laughs> and sometimes, like when I go to the gym and uh and I and I'm working with my trainer, uh, a lot of times I don't I don't believe that I can do another push up, another set, another squat. Turns out I can. And so that whole, I, if you think you can or think you can't, you, is right, has created a false premise that you must always believe in order to succeed. Can everyone understand how that's just a false premise? It's really got a good intention behind it, which just says, take action. Except that the in invisible instruction, the silent instruction that, that has given us has created a whole business around beliefs and fixing. Yeah, it is deep. It is deep. And so, so you can be just as you are and have what you want. Mm. You can be just as you are and have what you want. So let's talk about the new structure. Okay, let's talk about the new structure. So, so what have we covered? We've covered today that you can see, you can, you can see your ways that you make this about yourself. Yes, you can see it. And you've picked three things, yes, that you're going to catch that's going to let you know you're making this personal, haven't you? So you've got three things. You're about your day, you're thinking about your goals, and you do one of those three things. Ah, there I am, making it personal. Yes, you get that. You've made it about you, made it about your identity. And so now we need to understand, okay, well, how do I make the shift? How do I make this shift? And that's when we go through our five steps. That's when we go through our five steps.